Uh, where are you at? South Africa. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We're far away. Yeah. Uh, everything's good on this end. I'm just ready to get this fight over with and get paid. <laughs> Fantastic, man. Well, I just wanted to say thank you very much for your time, Jakar. It's an absolute honor to speak to you, and I hope everything's going well. And uh, I know it's uh, getting closer to fight time now, so I really appreciate you taking out the time for me today, man. Yep, anytime, brother. I, I wanted to start. Obviously, you've been on a on a bit of a roller coaster. You you fought on the last card that had fans. Um, you, you, your first stoppage loss, and then you were rescheduled. Ja Herbert in a COVID test, and then eleven day notice, another change, and so on and so on. And and now you've 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 got a big fight in front of you. What's that been like? That that entire roller coaster of 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 all of these changes. Ah uh, man, it's it's been crazy. You know what I mean. Uh, you know, you know my last fight. Uh, you know, being injured and then have to wait in a year to, you know, finally fight again and then, you know, come in a fight week and then, you know, a couple hours before I'm supposed to go go fight, uh, I find out they pull, you know, they pull my fight because uh, one of my corner men tested positive. So it's just been, um, I don't know, I, it, it, I think it's a blessing in disguise, you know, um, it's a way better matchup. Uh, than Herbert and uh, the other guy I was supposed to fight. So, okay, you, you talk about th that matchup in Jeremy Stevens. Are you are, are you the kind of fighter who's who's studying the opponent and, and adjusting the camp, or you kind of just stick to to what you know best? Um, to be honest, I watched uh, like I've seen his fights before, but none of them like I can remember. But um, I've only watched this fight one once because, you know, he has uh, 40, over 40 uh, professional fights. Um, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. So all I had to do is watch one, you know what I mean? And not much is going to change. And stylistically, is, is this the kind of fight that, that gets you really excited? It does. You know, the, the other two fights, you know, um, I was training hard, but this one... Um, I know there's some danger that comes with it. You know what I mean? He's uh, he comes out hard and fast, and um, you know I, I think we're kind of similar in styles, so it should uh, make make an interesting uh, interesting fight. You you mentioned uh, right at the top that you you're ready to go get this fight done and get paid. I, I heard you mention that you you said something along the lines the system is rigged or, or the game is rigged, um, and 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 you're if if I'm not mistaken your main focus now is is to to rack in those checks is that is that a fair assumption and, and does that change the way you you prepare for a fight now hey, can you repeat that someone had uh, had called in N no problem I was, I was just saying you, you said in a previous interview that the, the game's rigged and and you just want to really get paid does that sort of mindset change the way you approach fighting now no i mean I'm not going to – I mean, not, not really. It, it's the same. I'm going to go out there and fight, but I'm not expecting uh, anything, you know, from anyone. You know what I mean? Because like, I know how things are. They could tell you one thing and then totally opposite happen. Okay. Sorry about that. Myself. No worries. Is that Young Kingston? Yeah. <laughs> has he, how's, he, how's he doing after his mouthwash bath? Oh man, he uh, I swear I thought they were. He was like, Can you buy these bubbles for me? And I'm like, Okay, here you go. And and I'm squirting these all in, in the tub. And I'm like, there's, there's no uh, the bubbles. I'm like, This must be some cheap, some cheap soap. And uh, and then I start playing a video game. And then Courtney comes down and I'm like, Hey, that's mouthwash. And I'm like, <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Classic dad stuff, man. That's that's what's expected of us in any case to make mistakes like that. Yeah. Awesome. You, you you mentioned your wife. Um, obviously during the, the the COVID times, was it was an advantage to have a uh, access to a training partner in your house? Uh yeah. You know we we're luckily uh, lucky enough to have a zebra mat. Um, you know they uh they sent us wall mats and mats. So we uh, turned the whole garage into a, a workout facility. So, um, you know, it made it a little easier uh, to train and, you know, get her ready for her fights. 
Sure. Um, how, how hard is that for, for you to, to be in the corner for your wife in, in, in a high stakes fight? Um, it's pretty easy because, you know, I don't say much. Uh, I'm just in there just telling her, hey, we got bills to pay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <been a win. laughs> so, I, you know, but I really don't just say much. I, I'm just there to, you know, uh, for fight week to make sure everything goes good, her weight cut. Um, but other than that, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. And the, those zebra mats, do you ever have to use them for like a no-gi 10-minute submission only to kind of figure out a couple of things around the house, like submissions got, uh, for cooking? <laughs> Ah oh, man, I I hate I I hate going with Courtney because it always turns into, you know, we start going hard and then it turns into an argument. Then it's like, then she's mad at me for a little bit. So we try to, you know, unless it's a fight coming up, we try to stay away from the, you know, grappling and stuff on the mat. So. Okay. <laughs> and how, what are, what did you say are the pros and cons of? I mean, you guys are essentially employed by the same person and, and, and doing the same job in retrospect. What did you say are the pros and cons of that? Um, the pros are like, we know, we know the emotion, or we know how the fight game goes. You know how emotions are up and down and we know how to deal with each other's, with each other's, uh, what we're going through. But I would say the cons is like competition with the, with each other it's like <laughs> oh you didn't knock this guy out you did this and all that and it's like <laughs> i don't want to be you know in competition with my with my future wife <laughs> <laughs> and um <clears throat> with that in mind the last question on that sort of family marital stuff what are the sacrifices do you think you guys make different as, as a family unit and parents and, and in the fight game that people wouldn't necessarily see or understand? Um, we give up a lot of time, you know, um, I know we have our son now, but when, when we have to, you know, go to these fights and, you know, put training in, you know, he, he sees one of us and the other person's training. Um, so, I would just say it's just a long journey. You know, you got to, you give up a lot of family time and, uh, you know, you can't get that back. So I'm kind of glad, you know, Kingston's, he'll be three and, you know, I don't have too much longer fighting. So I'll be able to, to, to watch him grow up. So. Okay. Fantastic. I, I just want to talk about your camp a little bit. Um, what is that like at the moment? How is it structured? And I, I know you, you move around quite a bit and you, and you get different looks of all the other places. If you could just like run us through how, how your camp's made up at the moment. Okay. Like, like Courtney says, she always says, I call it like a, a Mayweather camp because we were, I work out like whenever I, I feel like it. Uh, but it's pretty uh, structured, you know, um, you know, Mondays, you know, I have hard uh, jujitsu grappling um, and then I have striking at night and then, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, you know, I wrestle MMA. Um, but uh, you know, I'm like, like, again, I'm traveling all around, you know, so if I drive 45 minutes, it's because I'm going, I'm driving to go get good work in with these sure. guys. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I got kind of stuck going, like when I was going to fight ready and to the lab, we did the same thing over and over every day. And it's like, I don't know, I get bored really quick. So if, if it's not something that's, you know, interesting with me, I'll, you know, I'll lose focus. So uh, I think, I think this has kept me um, honest, honest with myself. You know what I mean? And, you know, I, I fell back in love, love with the sport and uh, I'm kind of glad, you know, I, I left those gyms because uh, it opened up my eyes and, you know, I realized this is about me and we can't be doing, I can't be doing everything same thing everyone else is doing and um so i kind of catered it to myself so that's that, that that's actually something quite common which I, I don't know if you're aware of uh, don madge also lightweight from south africa in the ufc and he, he said a similar thing that he's changing his camp to structure around himself um and, and that's quite interesting to hear the the similarities and how guys are adjusting their camps around themselves as opposed to like fitting in 100 percent to the team but that's very interesting. And, and just on the camp, you obviously went through a camp. Um, 
you were supposed to fight Jai Herbert then then Luis Pena, which wasn't all that long ago. Do you do you take time off and then restart your camp again, or, or do you kind of just flow straight from camp to camp? Um, I really didn't take too much. I took like maybe a couple of days off, but just uh, slowly, you know, uh, picked up the intensity. You know, I didn't go balls to the wall as soon as I got back. Um, you know, I just started slow and then, you know, t- towards the middle, you know, I picked it up and now I'm starting to taper back down. Okay. Uh, but I feel like right on point, um, you know, my weight's good. Um, you know, my last camp, it was like a fat camp because I started at 207 <laughs> and I cut all the way down to 156. So this time I didn't have to worry about, you know, losing all this weight. So it's a lot better. And uh, how did how did you get to fat camp? What was like? What was the meal of choice? Oh man! You said how did? <laughs> oh, what was I eating? Did you yeah. lose the weight? No, no, no. To get to two hundred seven, is that just a common scenario? Oh man! Because I had I had uh, I had tore my shoulder before my last fight, so after that fight, I had got surgery, <laughs> so I wasn't doing anything. You know, what I mean, I was eating pizza, drinking beer, <laughs> uh, just. I kind of pretty much burned a hole in the couch because that's where I was sitting the whole time. So. <laughs> and, uh, um, but just uh, it happens, you know. Uh, you know, when you get injured, you kind of get depressed and you go in into this little dark spot. And you know, sure. I'm kind of glad. You know, once they give me a fight, I always get motivated again. And um, so I'm gonna try not to let myself get fat <laughs> after this fight. How uh, how hard was it to get back off the couch and back into full fitness and good shape? Um, I, I lose weight pretty easy. I don't. <laughs> it's crazy because, like, if if uh, if I sorry, no worries, man. Who? Oh, okay. Hey, I'll be right over there. You want to sit with me? No. Um, what was the question again? Sorry. No, I was just asking how hard it was to get back off the couch and, and lose that weight and get back in shape. Oh, yeah, it, it's pretty easy for me. You know, um, I don't know. I have a weird body. It's like I can work out one week and I'll drop 15 pounds. Um, <laughs> awesome. But just, you know, just having, a, you know, Courtney around and making sure I'm not eating uh, cookies late night. And... <laughs> Amazing, man. Uh, I, I don't want to keep you much longer. I see your son's calling on you there. Just the, the, the last one for me, Tricot. Um, you still there? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, she, Courtney's calling me. <laughs> no worries. Sorry, man. The last one for me is is what would you say people can expect from you come fight night? And, and, and if you have any message for the South African fans that will be listening to this. Um, You know... I always try to go out there and, and put a show on for everyone. You know, um, I, I don't hold anything back uh, when I'm in that cage, you know, uh, because I, I know, you know, I'm, I'm doing it for myself, but I'm also doing it for the for the fans out there. And um, but just just expect fireworks. You know, this fight, we're, we're both bangers and we're going to see who's the, who's the better man come fight night. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time again, and we wish you all the best of luck. We'll be watching closely. Massively exciting fight, and, and enjoying all the best for the rest of your camp. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. I have a question for you. What happened with uh, with um, the fight? Was it Don? Don Madge. Yeah, what happened? He was supposed to fight um, Nasrat, right? Yeah, yeah. So he was originally supposed to fight uh, Guram Kutaledzi and then uh, Nasrat. Um Visa issues, man. So with the COVID stuff, the the everything was clear on the American side, but the U.S. embassy on the South African side wasn't taking appointments. So we had two guys, Don and Drikas Duplessis, um, who's a middleweight, both had the same problem. But now they've um, they, they're opening up the appointments again from I think the next month or so. So both guys have both got fight news pending, so they'll be back there soon. Thank goodness. But it's yeah. been tough, man. The COVID was, stuff's was, been real tough, man. Yeah, I was excited to see him fight. That was going to be a good fight. He's a good fighter. Absolutely. Thank you, man. Maybe maybe your guys' paws will cross eventually. Yep, yep, definitely. Thank you so much, man. Have a good one. Yep, have a great day. You too, man. Cheers, man. Cheers.